welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History. I'm Claire Ridgway, I'm here with you every day of 2019 and possibly beyond, I'm not quite sure, bringing you Tudor events, births, deaths, marriages, baptisms and of course grisly or perhaps not so grisly executions. Today I'm taking you back to the reign of Queen Mary I for on this day in Tudor history the 11th of April 1554 rebel Sir Thomas Wyatt the Younger son of famous Tudor poet and diplomat Sir Thomas Wyatt the Elder was beheaded for treason on Tower Hill. So yes an execution. I know you've been missing them for a few days so I thought I'd bring you an execution today. Now, Wyatt had been tried for treason at Westminster Hall on the 15th of March 1554 after his failed rebellion of January and February 1554, which we of course know as Wyatt's Rebellion, named because Sir Thomas Wyatt the Younger was the uh, perceived leader of this rebellion, although it included a lot of other men too. Now, this rebellion um, was plotted by men who were not happy with Queen Mary I's uh, decision to marry the uh, Spaniard uh, Philip of Spain. And it sought to depose Queen Mary I um, and to replace her with her half-sister Elizabeth, who was seen as being better because she was Protestant, and that she would then be married off to Edward Courtenay, who was the Earl of Devon and an Englishman, not a Spaniard. Unfortunately for Wyatt and his fellow rebels, the Queen's Council got wind of the plot and were very prepared for it, and Mary was able to rally uh, the troops and the citizens of London against the rebels, and the plot just fell apart and the rebels were rounded up and, of course, imprisoned. At his trial, Wyatt stated that he was guiltless of plotting the Queen's death and that his whole intent and stir was against the coming of strangers and Spaniards and to abolish them out of this realm. And he would only admit to sending Elizabeth a letter advising her to get away as far from the city as she could, the rather for her safety from strangers to which he said that she replied, though not in writing, that she did thank him much for his goodwill and that she would do as she should see cause. So they were trying to get him to implicate Elizabeth, but he wouldn't. And he said that was her only involvement was him writing a letter to her just to tell her to get out of the city and her writing to him and saying that she would do what she thought was sensible. Nevertheless, even though he said he was guiltless, Wyatt was found guilty and he was sentenced to death. His execution was delayed for a time though, as it was hoped that he could be persuaded to implicate Elizabeth and I'm sure the persuasion would have involved uh, torture. Now, um, John uh, Nichols, or Nicholas, I can't remember which Nichols, in his contemporary chronicle, um, which is about the short reign of Queen Jane, going into Mary I's reign and specifically looking at Wyatt's rebellion, he records that on the day of his execution, the constable and lieutenant of the tower took Wyatt to visit Edward Courtenay, who'd also been rounded up and imprisoned and put in the tower but that what was spoken is not yet known. So we don't know what the two men said to each other. Wyatt was then taken up on Tower Hill to the scaffold there. On the scaffold, Wyatt addressed the crowd and Nichols, yes, he is Nichols, not Nicholas, records his speech. Good people, I'm come presently here to die, being thereunto lawfully and worthily condemned, for I have sorely offended against God and the Queen's Majesty, and am sorry, therefore. I trust God hath forgiven and taken his mercy upon me. I beseech the Queen's Majesty also of forgiveness. And let every man beware how he taketh anything in hand against the higher powers. Unless God be prosperable to his purpose, it will never take good effect or success, 
and thereof ye may learn at me. He went on to use this last opportunity, this last public address that he could give to completely exonerate the Lady Elizabeth, the future Elizabeth I, who was also by this time imprisoned in the Tower of London after being implicated in Wyatt's rebellion. He also took the opportunity to try and clear Edward Courtenay as well, saying, And I pray God I may be the last example in this place for that or any other like, and whereas it is said and whistled abroad that I should accuse my Lady Elizabeth's grace and my Lord Courtenay, it is not so, good people, for I assure you, neither they nor any other now yonder in hold or durance was privy of my rising or commotion before I began, as I have declared no less to the Queen's Council, and this is most true. Now here he was interrupted by Dr Hugh Weston, who was there on the scaffold to act as his confessor, who pointed out that in his previous testimony to the Queen's Council um, that Wyatt had contradicted this. Um, he saith that which he hath showed to the Council in writing of my Lady Elizabeth and Courtenay is true. But Wyatt's biographer Ian W. Archer points out that that testimony was probably obtained from Wyatt under torture. So Wyatt was now, seeing as he was able to and in a public place on the scaffold, was correcting that and saying that Elizabeth and Edward Courtenay were not involved in the rebellion. Wyatt then clasped hands with the Earl of Huntingdon, Lord Hastings and Sir Thomas uh, Strangwish before undressing down to his shirt and kneeling upon the straw. He spoke a few words before he lifted his eyes up to heaven. Then he put his handkerchief over his eyes as a blindfold and lay his head on the block ready for the executioner. Fortunately for Wyatt, the executioner was able to take his head off in just one stroke. Wyatt's body was then quartered and taken to Newgate where um, the parts were parboiled and displayed around the city as a warning for anyone who would commit treason. Anyone that was thinking of committing treason, this is the punishment. His head was placed on the gallows at St James's but was subsequently stolen and no one knows what happened to it after that. So that is the sad tale of Sir Thomas Wyatt the Younger, a rebel, but a man who had immense courage by standing up to uh, Queen Mary the First Council and his interrogators and probably torturers um, and refusing to implicate Elizabeth, who was eventually um, released from her prison in the Tower of London into house arrest. She was able to go to um, her palace at Woodstock. So that was the 11th of April 1554, the end of Sir Thomas Wyatt the Younger in the reign of Queen Mary the First. So I'm sorry to have brought you a horrible one today, but uh, we haven't done an execution for a few days and he was a rather important man. Um, so there you go. I will be back tomorrow with more Tudor goodies. You can subscribe to my channel by just clicking there. Um, please do give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying the videos and you can hit the bell to be notified of new videos too. I do appreciate uh, you taking the time to watch this video. See you soon. Bye bye.